Let's see if it works this time. All right, one capo. Hey, Andrew. All right, we're trying to trying it on my channel now. <laughs> I'm trying to get Callie on. All right, so this adding. I hope y'all can hear me because it's just sound like dead air. And I got the fan on. All right. Please, it sounds please, normal now. Yeah. We good? I think so. I got to try to put my thing back in this holder. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I don't see nothing on my page, so I don't know how to share this. I don't know how to do it. And I don't see nothing. Do you see the chat? Is there a chat? Yeah, I see the chat. But I don't understand why you don't you can see, see it. it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see it either. But I, hey, I it's all good. It's all good. Um, we won't worry about that. Okay. You know, um, as long as long as you can see the chat, I'm sure they'll come in the chat um and ask their questions and say what they got to say. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So right. You know. Okay. You ready? Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. You can start with the, <laughs> you can start with the questions that you had. Yeah, peace, peace, everybody, man. Check this out. Um, this is my sister Tasha. She, man, um, we definitely been talking about some things, man. Um, there's been a lot of questions going on in the indigenous community and in the um, what we call the conscious community, the Pan African community, you know. Um, and I wanted to bring the sister on so she could answer some questions um, that a lot of us have. Um, leaving Pan-African or even as a Pan-African. Right. Um, like I was telling people, um, uh, my cousin is uh, Rikido Slim Bull. You feel what I'm saying? Um, a lot of you know him on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. um, very, very brilliant mind. You feel what I'm saying? But that's my that's my younger cousin. And he's he's helped me walk through our family, our family tree and, and learn who we really are. You feel what I'm saying? And um, he's okay. even offered that help to not just our family, but other families, you know, and um, we get a lot of backlash. Those of us who um, uh, find our truth um, and and we stand on our truth. Um, and especially if we used to be with the Pan-African, mm. uh, we were we were believing the whole um, out of Africa theory and all of this and right. you know everything right everything we were taught in school everything we didn't dig deeper to find uh, our truth um, so why I, why I wanted to bring you on is because um, like I told you uh, you have a great YouTube channel where mm -hmm. you you teach very well and I and, Thank and you. it caught me um, it caught me and um, we kind of been friends for a hot little second you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying we've been friends on here you yeah. know um, I just think I just think the universe works in time for us to uh, connect. Um, I wanted to bring you on to have a conversation. I don't want this to turn into in the comments. I don't want this to turn into anything disrespectful. No, you can disagree. You can uh, you know you can ask your questions. Tasha is here, willing to answer any questions she can answer. Um, like I said, I wanted to stay respectful. You can disagree, but all the name calling and, and all of that, mm -hmm. we do not need. This is a uh, uh, intelligent conversation that we want to have with both sides of the fence. Right, um, right. So, Tasha, for my viewers, mm -hmm. for, 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 for my Are viewers. Are your viewers, um, did you did you share it on your page so they can see it? I, I can't see. Yeah. I, no, but, you, but this goes automatically on my page. Though. Okay, 
Yeah, because it I goes see. automatically. Did you tag me? Yeah, I, I think so. Let me let me make sure. Cause see, I can't see anything. I can't see anything over here. Okay. I don't see anything on my screen. I just see me and you. That's it. I don't know. I don't see anything to share. I don't see the chat. I don't That's see so anything. That's weird. Yeah, because you used to be able to see all these things. Maybe it's because we have it uh, landscape. Um, but if know. there's anybody, I don't, I don't know if there's anybody in here. You know what? You know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I got you. I got Maybe you, I got you can you. get uh, um, get Rick to share I'm gonna it. I'm going to use my other phone. Okay. And uh, I'm going to share it. Um, but if there's anyone in here um, who has questions for the sister, she says she is willing to answer the questions. Um, okay, it looks like some people are already mm -hmm. sharing. And y'all don't have to be pan Africans to ask the genealogy questions either. Yeah, okay, yeah, I see you. I see you now, so let me start okay. sharing it. Okay, got you. Um, share the groups. Um. Dude, give me one second. Let me just mm -hmm. let me let me just Yeah, because I saw a lot of people that was on your page is not on here right now. So I don't know if they got okay. like, kind of lost because we kept having to reconnect. So let me make sure it's on my main page first. Here we go. Uh -huh. Live with Tester. Um and for the people um on my on my page, right? Um Ro, Ro, what, what does I that mean? I want to. I want to let you. Huh? She said, "Facebook equals eleven. Cali equals zero. What does that mean, Ro, Ro? I don't Oh, understand. because I'm a videographer too. Oh, okay. I'm a videographer too. <laughs> so she's saying I know everything about the cameras and stuff, <laughs> but um, I can't win on Facebook. Oh, she's saying Facebook. Beat me. They do on something. That's my girl, Ro, Ro. She, They did. Something. Okay, I see. I see the chat now, though. Okay, I, I see, see the chat people. now. It's you see it? Okay. So you can see it on your other yeah, phone. Yeah, I see it. I'm using my, I'm just I'm looking at the chat from my phone. So okay. um, um for the people who's coming in on my from from my side, Me right? Too. I wanna I want to let Tasha introduce herself and explain who she is um and what she does. And also um she, we can I'm gonna bring some topics to her. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that we, um, we encounter over on my side, you know, cause like I said, I'm, I, you know, I'm kind of like the bridge right. between indigenous and the, and the Pan-Africans, right. you feel what I'm saying? So, um, there's a lot of questions that we hear go on, on, on this side. And I wanted to, um, bring you on so you can address some of those topics. Also, I, um, have some comments that people were making um, in some of the posts, mm -hmm. um, and I want to read. Get to that saying so. Um, right. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, Tasha, let them know who you are. I, you know, thank you for having me on. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you. <laughs> um, well, I'm Tasha. She. Um, but basically, I do a lot of indigenous history research genealogy research. I've um, been doing my family's genealogy since two I'm getting phone call. <laughs> my brother keeps calling me. But yeah, I've been doing my family genealogy since 2006. Um, probably b before that because my great grandmother, she was being, she was like getting ill and we were talking about it because she had told me the family history years ago and she wanted me to Write a book like Alex Haley. I still haven't done it, but write a book like Alex Haley did mm -hmm. on our family. Um, right. And she was the one that uh, told me that we went for Africa because I used to be obsessed with Alex Haley when I was little. And I came to her because I saw her as the darkest person in the family. And you know how they have the, you know how the roots thing is. It's like that person had to be African or know something. So I came to her and asked her who who in our family was from Africa? And she laughed at me. <laughs> she was like, uh, we are from Africa, baby. <laughs> and she started telling me the migration story of our family um, coming up more recently, coming up from Mexico to the Virginia area. And then before that, before we were in Mexico, we were in South America and Canada. And, you know, different parts of the family came together in Mexico. Um, and then, 
you know, from that, I was like, ah, she sounds crazy. Like, we ain't no Mexicans. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when I actually went and did the research, when I asked, like, um, history professors and things, they kind of told me on the low that, yeah, uh, indigenous groups did migrate up from Mexico. And they told me to look into the Olmecs. They're like, look at the Olmecs. So I found out that the Olmecs are the she, were, are also called the she people. That's X-I, spelled X-I. And I started doing more research into that. And um, so before, you know, before she passed away, she told me that story. And I just thought it was crazy. And, like, before that, she had told us about us being from Mexico. Me and my brother used to joke about We laughed at it. We were like, we're not Mexicans. Like, we're Mexicans. We don't look like, quote, unquote, Mexicans, you know. But, yeah, she... And it wasn't like when she said that we aren't Africans, she was like, those are beautiful people, but those just, you know, that's not our culture. You know, that's, it wasn't like a disrespect, like anti, you know, like it's something wrong with being African. That, that right. wasn't the case. Like a lot of people, some of the Pan-Africans are saying that we are doing it out of self-hate, but that's not what it is. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, definitely, um, this, you know, these are things I wanted to get into with uh -huh. you because, like you said, I think there's a lot of misconception going on. We're hearing that there's a lot of division right. um, going on um, with us. And for me, I, you know, I had to ask a sister yesterday, like, where's the division coming from? Right. Are you paying attention to where the division is coming from? Uh -huh. Are you paying attention to what's being said? Right. So what I'm saying is um, we have a lot of people telling us who we are and who we are not. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. And it's become, you, you, what I'm saying is you can't keep, I can't keep telling you you're a hoe or you're a dead be dad. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I can't keep telling you something like this. Mm -hmm. And there's information out here to discredit that, right. to disprove, to, to, you feel what I'm saying? Right. But I keep telling you that anyway. No, you are this. Right. No, you are this. And there's actually information here that refutes that. You feel what I'm saying? Right. At some point in time, it's going to become disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. At some point in time, it's going to it's going to be disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And and the only reason I use those analogies is because I have to use something that hits hard. Right. You, you get what I'm saying? For yeah. you to understand how disrespectful it becomes when you keep telling us who we are and who we're not. Um. Mm -hmm. So um. Some of the things I wanted to ask you about, and these are some of the things I just wanted you to kind of touch on. What you can, you know, whatever you yeah. whatever you want to go with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure they'll be asking questions in the comments. Um, so one of the things I hear is uh, I hear Pan-Africans always say uh, Native Americans when they refer to the Aboriginal and indigenous community. Mm -hmm. um, is there a difference in the terms um, are, uh, between Native Americans and Aboriginals? Um, what would be the correct term to use when addressing mm -hmm. the indigenous community, um, things like that? Well, yeah, there's a difference. Native American, that term is fairly new. Um, and there's a lot of uh, stig the stigma with it. And then there's a lot of undercutting with it as well. Um, but I, because, you know, honestly, everyone who lives and who was born in American are Native American. Right. And there also used to be a Native American party, which consisted of only European people. And a lot of these people can't, to be honest, a lot of people calling themselves Native Americans. They are, you know, they consider themselves very mixed and they like to say that we are all mixed, but I don't believe we are. We are all mixed people. So they use the term Native American instead of indigenous and instead of American Indian. Now, American Indian are the people who are on the treaties, who are on the laws. So American Indian would be the proper legal term or Aboriginal because the Aboriginal people are documented in, um, you know, scholarly, scholarly primary source doc documents, say Aboriginals. 
um, like the history of certain areas or the average, you know, the history of the aboriginal people of like Tennessee or Virginia. If you look up those old, really old books, they consider people aboriginal and Indian in those. Well, we know that those are just general terms. It's not the proper term because people came from hundreds, over at least over 500 different nations and tribes in the area. So essentially, it's like a blanket term. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I got you. Um, so I'm just trying to go through some of the um, things that were brought to me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you've been on my page. You, you, yeah. You've been on my page and you've seen a lot of the the comments and, and things like that. So I'm just going through some of the things that I pulled out mm -hmm. um, that I feel like we should discuss. Um, yesterday, or, or it might have been early this morning, so I'm talking to a sister, and mm -hmm. she's, she was asking me, basically she was asking me what benefits do we get as a, as being indigenous to this land um, versus Africans, or right. you know, because this is the thing. I'm trying to figure out what do we get out of being African here. Um, if you claim to be African, um, there's actually an amendment saying that you aren't a citizen, that you aren't uh, a full human being, actually which is kind of crazy. Um, also, with no, 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 Tasha, this is nothing you're making up, though, right? No. This is you nothing you're making up. up. This is actual, this is actual documents, right? I mean, right? the Pan-Africans themselves bring up, what was it, is it the 13th or the 14th Amendment? You're right. Talking about right. legalized slavery and um, the whole Dred, if you look at the Dred Scott case as well, they say people have, who, no, you're right. who, are, who claim to be of African descent aren't considered citizens of the United States. Gotcha. So um, what? Okay. So what was the other so what question? I'm, so, so the the question was the benefits. Mm -hmm. What are, are there benefits once you find out that you're from this land that you can claim? Um, how does that work? Like you know, what I'm saying versus you being African. Uh, how does an African get benefits? You, you get what I'm saying? Like, are there benefits for an African once they find out? <laughs> I mean. That's why I tell people to do their genealogy. You don't know what type of, you know, what heritage you have. I mean, I wouldn't be trying to look for benefits. Like, I mean, you know, based off your heritage. But if you would like to join or enroll in a tribe, there's certain benefits that each individual tribe has. And some that's tribes, what I'm, that's yeah, what I'm, some tribes that's, don't that's have that's any benefits at all. Like the, if you're in a Cherokee band, um, the Cherokee actually have a corporation. Cherokee Nation is actually a corporation and they have businesses. I think it's called the Cherokee Nation Incorporated and they receive checks. You know, everybody splits those profits with the rest of the tribe. Now, say uh, the tribe that my, my great grandmother that I told you guys about earlier, the tribe that she's from, the Mattapanai they don't have any benefits at all. They're basically living like a third world country. So you should, you know, you can't really say, I want to be an American Indian to get benefits because everybody doesn't get what? benefits. Because, and that's yeah, another thing. This was a that question that was asked to me. Yeah. That was a question that was asked to me yesterday. Like, what benefits do you get from being from this land? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know. Well, the, but my thing is, mm -hmm, there no, could be benefits if we all organize as an indigenous or aboriginal group to try to reparate some of the land and resources that was taken from us. Now, you can't reparate or honestly get reparations as claiming to be an African, right? If, Afri if Africans were getting reparations those would go to african nations because reparations only go to nations so if you're claiming to be an african trying to in america trying to get reparations ghana is going to get those reparations nigeria people that you don't even know those people are going to get the reparations not you so you have to go about it a different way and that's the only thing that yeah. i the problem that i have with ados they're claiming to be descendants of slaves, but you're not an a nation. 
That's why the Japanese got reparations and the quote unquote African Americans did not. Where is African, like you said, where is African America? Where is that, you know, yeah. like where is that nation that you can receive benefits from the government? Because governments give benefits to other governments. If y'all right. understand, that's, you know, y'all can look well, up all this information that's out there for you. Right. And that's my thing. That's, that's one of the things I'm telling people, like, uh -huh. um, you actually came on my page, you know, and, and, and you offered this. I didn't, you know, I, this is nothing I put together. I was just curious to right. ask if you could find, if you, you as a Pan-African, uh -huh. if you, if someone offered to help you do your genealogy, and learn your family. Find out who's in your family. Trace your family back. Mm -hmm. Would you accept that offer? Yeah. And, and I had a lot of people hit my list, hit, hit that post up saying, yes, I'm with it. I'm with it. But, but then I talked to you and you like. Yeah. I checked my message and I had a couple of more people, maybe three or four people, more people reach out after your video um, last night. So, I mean, some people are interested and some people might have African ancestry. I'm not saying that people don't. Like, if, no, if you claim to be right. African, wouldn't you want proof that you are African? Wouldn't you want to know the nation right. that, or the ship the person came on or whatever? Like, some of the Africans came over here as free people. They weren't, that's why the whole slave narrative is wrong. If you go back to Jamestown and, 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 and you know, after that 16, 26 thing with the 20 odd Negroes, there was Afri African people coming here to uh, Keokatan and the area in, in towns in that area of the, um, I guess, not Roanoke, that would be, I guess, the Chesapeake area. There was actual free Africans coming as passengers on these ships. And that's what they don't ever talk mm. about. They, they make up this fake slave narrative and everything. There was no slaves that came here and, and, um, 1626 all those people were free people and they gained that they worked as indentured servants as the europeans did and some of them were actually indigenous europeans which were melanated and had you know looked like us and those people mm. became free after they did their little seven years or whatever and they they have land grants if you look up all that stuff a lot of people on the land grants um documents that you find in virginia at the library of virginia they were not pale quote unquote white people some of them were dark mm. skin you know like look like us europeans or free africans or free indians and i uh i think i just watched i think last night i was watching your video mm -hmm. um where you were at the library of congress mm -hmm. um, and you were talking about the slave ships and the yeah. numbers being off and can you touch on that a little bit can you uh what you were saying in that video, mm -hmm. if you remember? Yeah, from, from the research that I did there, that's probably like a year ago. Um, from the research that I did there, I'm seeing um, these people on the ships. They were like, one ship had like one girl on it coming from Africa. Mm -hmm. And then there was other ships with like low amounts of people. They try to make it like, they cram like 500 people on a ship. And they all made it here, and nobody that's what they died. Taught, that's what they taught us in school. But that didn't. They taught happen. us that in school. If you look at the actual. Right. Documents. They that's they taught happened. us that in the movies. Yeah. That's how they taught us in the movies, right? Like maybe on average, around fifty to one hundred people at the most were passengers. They're listed as passengers on these ships. Um, many of the ships are domestic. P people taking people from New England, New York, coming down to uh, the Chesapeake Bay area. And then coming from down there to South Carolina, to New Orleans. So they were doing, moving a lot of the indigenous people around um, most of the ships. Most of the logs of the ships are showing them moving indigenous people around. It's not like everyone. Mm. Like they only show only Africans, but it's mostly the indigenous people being moved around. And you can look up yeah, all so this information. And even the ships, some right. of the ships are called the Indian Queen. They have names after some tribes. If you look up these names. Hmm. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's all that's and that's really all this live is about right now. You get right. what I'm saying? That's really all this live is about. Mm -hmm. Instead of insulting us, Research. instead of coming at us, the information is there. Like who's gonna go look for the information? Right. The same way 
I asked you guys, hey, this sister is willing to do your genealogy. Mm -hmm. She came on and said she's willing to do. So my point is this. The information is there. Yes. They're not hiding the information. But, but, you know, that's like the saying says, what do you, you know, how do you hide information from, from a Negro? You put it in the book. They, they act like people are acting like they're, it's this big conspiracy to hide the information from us. No, they're in the libraries. They're, yeah, all, they're and, actually and the on the internet what I'm now. Telling people, yeah, and I wanna, what I'm telling people is, for us, the truth is not going to fall in our lap. Right. It's not just going to fall in our lap, y'all. We got to go get this information. We got to, like, it just baffles me, like, we say we want truth, uh -huh. but this, for me, this is all. This is like religion all over again. You know what I'm saying? For many of us who walked away from religion after right. doing more deeper research, right. I get it. I wasn't ready to accept Jesus. Was listen, I wasn't ready to accept all that either. Uh -huh. But after you start to do more research and you start, many of us came to the conclusion: Hey, something ain't right. Yeah. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And it's, that's the same thing. We can't think they would just lie to us about religion and wouldn't think they wouldn't lie to us about our history. Everything, right. Everything. And it's all in the You books. know, we, it's so much, it's so much, like I was saying yesterday, uh -huh. I can remember my grandmother, my grandmother and my daddy telling me we were Indian, right? Uh -huh. I, you know what I'm saying? We had Indian in us, right? Right. But I ignored them. I uh -huh. ignored them. Why? Because I was in school every day being taught roots, yep. being taught we came from Africa. They're showing roots in, in all these slave movies on TV every day, uh -huh. you know you know what I'm saying, every year. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I'm ignoring my own family uh -huh. because this is what's being brainwashed into us from school. Right. You get what I'm saying? So this is what I'm trying to tell people at some point in time. We got to look deeper than what we were taught in school. Yes, we do. You feel what I'm saying? We, we got to look research. deeper. Right. So um, and, and that's what I mean by what, when I say it's not going to fall in our lap. No. And then you, you have people like you have people like Tasha mm -hmm. who is actually going out to these places. Actually, no, leaving the house, not mm -hmm. behind the computer, not on the Internet, going to these libraries. You feel right. what I'm saying? Going to... Check these records. You have people who are actually doing this. They're not sitting in front of a master teacher who's telling them, hey, we all come from here. She's going to these places. Right. You get what I'm saying? That's what I mean about this stuff is not going to fall in our lap. Once you start finding out who your mm -hmm. family is, start going to these places. Right. To find out about your family. And then another you know, thing. And, and I, I don't mean no disrespect right. to anyone, but. If we want, if we say we really want the truth, do we really want the truth? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I I, I went, Tasha, I was on it too, Tasha. Mm -hmm. Africa, hey, black power, woo -woo -woo, I was on it too. But you know what? You feel what I'm saying? You know what, what really brought me over to this side was talking to actual African people and talking to their yes. elders. Now, if you talk to talking African, to the elders, African yes, Tasha. Elders, if you talk to any West yes. African elders, from these tribes, they will tell you that their people aren't indigenous to Africa, or at least not to West Africa. A lot of those people come from Asia and migrated, or from the Middle East and migrated to West Africa. Mm. And uh, most of this mm. happened within the last, what, two to 2,000 or 1,000 years. A lot of those tribes that are in West Africa now came with the invasion of Islam. They're not even native there. The indigenous people of Africa are mostly pygmy people, and they weren't um, the same people that are here today. And you can, and and that's something that they don't talk about. A lot of them killed off right. the indigenous people of West Africa, or they mixed in right. with them. They don't look the same as those people that was there. Hmm. Uh, a lot of people came in from the from the east and the Sudan or the Nubian invasion. Like our people were taught over here that Nubians were this and good and that. Nubians killed millions of indigenous people in Africa. You know, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that they don't talk about. Um, just, and they're not going to talk about it. Yeah. And then there's um, videos like I, I brought up this issue a while ago and uh, Safa Karu, he actually found videos and interviewing these African elders saying that they 
came from somewhere else. They're not from originally from West Africa. So there's videos out there showing these people talk. You have to talk to the actual people. And I actually went to, to yeah, like I went to this um, Nigerian party with a couple of friends. It's probably maybe two quote unquote African American friends. And um, my, my ex-husband was with me there. <laughs> but me and my, my closest friend, they were asking us, are, are you guys uh, Native Americans? That's what they called us. Like, are y'all American Indians? They were like, you, to my ex-husband, you look like you could be part Nigerian. But those, the rest of them, they look American Indian. And they were asking us, like, what, you know, who are our people and what tribes we came from or whatever. And I told them what my grandmother said. But I still, like, at that time, this was probably, this was years ago. So at that time, I was still kind of in denial. But it was like I kind of went by the one drop rule because I had always claimed to be 85 yeah. or 75% American Indian because that's what I had been told. But it's like, okay, I'm American Indian, but I'm still black. That's how... That's my mindset then. I don't really consider myself, quote, unquote, black. But I mean, socially, yes. But I don't use that term anymore. Right. But that, right. that's how a lot of people think. Like, mm -hmm. we're going by the one drop rule. You still whatever. You still nigga, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you yeah. got whatever else in your family or any other cultures. Um, but it's like the, the Nigerian people told us straight up, y'all different. Like, y'all not us. Like, what tribe are y'all from? But like I said, some people do have African ancestry. And like my ex-husband, they asked True. him, like, are you, True. you know, one-fourth Nigerian or are you partially Nigerian? Because, you know, he probably does have that ancestry. And I don't think he's, his family is in their full genealogy yet. You said ex-husband. <laughs> my cousin messing with me. <laughs> yes, ex-husband. Ex but Sasha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, Tasha, this is what I was talking to the sister yeah. about yesterday about the about the division, right? Right. Because just like you're saying, there are some of you who do have African. Exactly. Indian. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. We are not saying you don't. don't. And, mm -hmm. We're but not telling you who you, you are. Telling us, it's you telling us right. that we are you. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? And we're telling you. We are not you. You are you. Exactly. Yes, you have some African in you. Fine. Mm -hmm. We don't fault you for having African in you. But you're disrespecting us and you're, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, telling us what we have and who we, you know, who we are. But That's it, where the division comes in. But even when you sit down with these Pan-Africans and ask them about their family, they do admit to having American Indian ancestry. Indian. Thank you. So it's I, like, Tasha, I do that a lot of times. I haven't I met you, any that, ha know, that has not had American Indian ancestry. Right. And I asked them. I asked them that question. Like, I remember one time I did a post. I, I, I think I went all day long mm -hmm. doing this one question. And I had people go back to your family and ask your grandmothers, if your grandmothers are still living, ask them, did you have Indian in you mm -hmm. or did you have African in you? Um, man, I, that post has to be still up on exactly. my page because I don't delete too much of nothing. Yeah. But that post, people started coming back and they were like, yo, I do have Indian. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Exactly. Ask the questions. Find out. Ask the questions. For sure, right. I get it. We went to school. They taught us we come from Africa. Mm -hmm. I get it. But we were also taught... As some of us was also taught Santa Claus was real too at one point. Some of yeah. us was also taught the Tooth Fairy was real at some point yeah. too. Like, yeah. when did you stop believing in that? Once you started to realize some things were wrong, some things were not adding up. But what I was saying yesterday was a lot of us left religion. Mm -hmm. A lot of us left religion just following what somebody was saying because somebody was saying it and we moved it right over into what we so-called call the conscious community. Mm -hmm. And this is the same thing we're doing. Yep. We're following something somebody else is telling us exactly. without, how do you know without more facts. about Egypt than you know about your own family tree? Mm -hmm. So that, that, that was one of the things that hit me for me.
Right. You get what I'm saying? For me. Mm -hmm. Then a lot of other stuff started to come back. Like, oh, wait a minute. Grandma did used to say who was Indian. Mm -hmm. Then I remember my dad saying, I don't put black on my... He's, I remember my dad he saying, said I never put black. And then my mama was saying, I never put black on my... You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, these conversations started coming back. Mm -hmm. And I started saying, whoa, hold on, wait a minute. And then, like I was telling you yesterday... A couple of years ago, I had ran across a Dane Calloway video. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that video, ugh, it like, I turned that video off because it was making too much sense to me. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to hear that. No, no, we're from Africa. No, 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 no. That's where I was at. I turned that brother off for about two years. I ran from that dude's video. Yeah. And them videos came right back around. I had, and his yeah. videos led me to somebody else, mm -hmm. to led me to you, then led mm -hmm. me to somebody else, then led me, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I had the same that experience That's with, what I was with, with Carrie Davis videos. I saw a Carrie Davis video back in, Carrie Davis. what was it, 2011, 12? And, um, you know, it was like, okay, like, you know, this is the stuff that my grandma told me, like, should I look more into? And it was kind of like, no, you know, I was kind of getting more into the Egyptian stuff because I, I still like Egyptian stuff. You know, I was getting more into that. And I was like, yeah. I don't know, but, you know, I'm going to come back to it and whatever. And I, I just said, I'm going to do my own research on it because I had already been encouraged yeah, but by professors to to do, you know, look into American Indian history because they were saying that, there's, you know, a lot of people are not in, like, into that, and they're not researching it, and it's so much resources out here. Right. That's what they were trying to tell me. So you guys can find and, all that and, stuff and what I was saying, Yeah, and what I was saying yesterday, Tasha, was um, the truth don't care. Right. The truth does not care whether you're ready for it mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. The truth does not care whether... You like the way it looks or not. Right. You get what I'm saying? The truth a lot of times does not come pretty. Mm -hmm. But just because it doesn't appeal to you does not mean it's still not the truth. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of us are at the point of same way we were in religion, cognitive mm -hmm. dissonance. Yeah. Kicking in. Because things can be shown to us right in our face. Your family can sit here and tell you. You know, nothing about no African. Right. And then but you're going to keep telling your family, no, we're African. Right. Grandma, we're African. Hey, Grandma. You get what I'm saying? And your grandma is like, no. no. What exactly. slave, tra slave trade? What slave trade are you they talking about? Right. And then there's still family members so, that deny it, even when we had family members born on reservations. They're still trying to say that um, we look a certain way because we got African. And then they don't know who. I'm like, I've done the genealogy on that branch and there's nobody African. So who is this person that you claim? And like, where, when did they come here and where did they come from? They don't have any answers. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I be, that's, that's one mm -hmm. thing I do. I be asking those questions. Like, just like I be asking, like, if you was to get deported out of here today or tomorrow, mm -hmm. where are you going? Exactly. Where are you going? Where, where are you going in Africa? Find you out. know in Africa. I mean, if, what's your next of kin? If you should know this, right? Yeah, if you claim because you Africa. never know what's going to happen. Yes, you should. You, you need you to do your this, genealogy. Right? Yeah, it's if you want to, if you claim to be African, that's you know that's your business. But have the proof and find out the name of the ancestor who came. Some people can actually find those people. Trace it back, and then yes. many of us can find trace ourselves back to Indian chiefs and and people on right. reservations. So don't right. try to discredit somebody else, um, you know, from from the stuff that we're finding, because some of us actually done the work. Right, right. That's that's mm -hmm. real. Um, Tasha. Um, so a little more into that conversation I was having with the sister last night. Mm -hmm. She asked the question. She said, "Her question was, what happened to the people mm -hmm. from this land?" If uh, she's saying, what happened to the people from this land that they're at the bottom with the slaves that came over? Is what she was saying. So who came? How over? did how did they take over the people of this land? 
Basically, well, she said, once how do you we get into the history and read the books? If you go. Oh, did you, your mic cut off? You still there? My mic. Oh, off? okay. There it is. I hear you. Yeah. You're breaking up. Oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, is that better? Does that sound okay? Uh, you cool with me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you go into the history um, of the colonial period, you will see what happened to the indigenous people of this land. And they will tell you in these books that these people were enslaved. Uh, there's a book called The Strenuous Pur um, Puritan. That's about New England and the um, Plymouth Plantation. Now we hear we're taught about the Pilgrims and you know them coming over from England to New England and all this happy fake stuff and they're you know escaping religious persecution. But when they came here, they basically um, tricked a lot of the indigenous people. Um, Plymouth Plantation is actually built on top of an old Algonquian town. Um, that Squanto used to be um, a member of that tribe. Now, if you look at the history of Squanto, uh, you will see that he was a slave. He was mm -hmm. taken from his land in New England and taken over to Europe, to, to um, several different places in Europe, and he was enslaved there for years. Now, somehow he, he got his, you know, got on a boat and came back here. Um, to America, and that's why he was able to communicate with them because he knew English and Latin and probably other languages. Um, but right there, that's showing you that Squanto was a slave. Okay, so all the slaves were not African. Other people from his village were enslaved as well, and then some people died off. Now, if you look into mm. all of the Indian wars, you will see that the, most of the people were not killed in those wars. Many of them were taken and enslaved. And a lot of the times it wasn't the Europeans enslaving them. It was other rival Indian tribes enslaving right. their rivals and right. selling them for trinkets, for tomahawk, you know, metals and things and beads um, to the Europeans. A lot of the same thing that went on with the Africans. Yeah. And a lot of the same thing that's going on today in, in modern time. Exactly. So same thing. once you research the Indian slave trade, stuff is going to um, make sense. They kind of try to downplay it. But when you start looking into the local history, you will see more proof. Um, there's also a book um, from, from my nation, the Powhatan Nation, um, Specifically in Mattapanai, they did a history um, called The True Story of Pocahontas. So they did a story of Pocahontas. In that, that. Yeah, in that book, they true. talk about how many or probably the majority of the people were enslaved here and others ran away and joined other tribes or they became free people of color. Many of our ancestors are free people of color and not enslaved. That's why you got to do your genealogy. A lot of people walking around um, with this inferiority complex about, oh, we, you know, this victim thing that we were all slaves and uh, we come from slaves, so ain't no point of doing nothing. Or what, I've heard people say these crazy things, but a lot of people weren't enslaved. That's where you got to do your genealogy and know who was in your bloodline. Everybody doesn't have the same story. Okay. And we looked at, we, me and my cousin, Rakito, we looked at our family mm -hmm. and we didn't have any slaves in our exactly. family. Exactly. Exactly. We didn't have any like no man. We didn't, we had we had uh, I think our uh, fourth or fifth gra uh, great grandmother or something. She had a passport and everything. Mm. Like she was traveling. She was. You get what I'm saying? So right. this is what I'm saying. Like we didn't have no slaves in our family. Mm -hmm. But you know, we did that. We went in our family and found this out though. Right. Right. We went in our family and found this out. Me and that brother sat there and we went through our family. And this is what we're now doing. We're getting in touch with our other family members and we're starting to bring all of this to the light. Like, exactly. hey, y'all, listen, grandma was right. And, mm -hmm. you know, granddad was right. Listen, Virginia, they came, they went up to Virginia. They from down here. Mm -hmm. Oh, we went, my cousin said we went seven generations back. Oh, okay. That's good. You feel what I'm they, saying? Um, they you know, don't talk about that. He, they don't. They never. You notice that they don't have any movie. What's the movie about free people of color? They don't want you to know about free people of color because a lot, most of their roots go back to indigenous Americans. A lot of those families yeah. are indigenous. Merit the Chavis, 
the Gibsons, uh, Andersons, there's a whole bunch of different groups that are indigenous American groups. And they had to, for their protection, take on a Christian identity, you know, and they had to become free people of color yeah. and disown right. their tribes, you know, they took on that Christian identity that a lot of us still have for protection because there was a rule at one time that you couldn't make Christian people slaves. Now, yeah. New England, we're going back to New England, there's a group called the Praying Indians. Those people um, became Christians to protect themselves um, during the wartime. There's Pequot Wars, there was other battles going on where the Europeans were taking people and enslaving them. Now, those praying Indians were, were not, for the most part, some of them were enslaved, but for the most part, they were not enslaved because they became Christians. And actually, the first Bible created in America was written in the Algonquian language, which is an Indian language. Yeah. So if we yeah. were all, if all the slaves were African, why would they use the Bible in the Algonquian language to turn the slaves into Christians after that law, after they did away with the law that said, if you're a Christian, you can slave. They said you can enslave Christians who are not white, basically. So after that, they kind of went more in full force with conditioning people to become Christian because they felt the Christians were more docile. They gave people, it's not disrespect to that religion, but personally for me, but it yeah. gave people an objective like, okay, we're not going to get heaven on earth. We're going to get heaven when we die. So we can, uh, right. we got to take care of our earthly masters while we're here and we'll be promised something when we're uh, not here anymore in heaven. Um, so those first Bibles were in the Algonquin language. So that's yeah, kind of telling, giving yeah. you a clue who, who a lot of the slaves were especially in the colonial period before they were important um, Africans and, and, you know, more numbers. Now, the importation, if you look up the actual numbers, the importation of Africans didn't really begin um, like that until like with the late 1700s, early 1800s. And then it was banned in what, 1808. So it's a small period mm. of time that they legally could bring in Africans and really how many people can you bring in illegally um the act the scholarly numbers for the people who came here from africa who are imported period that survived so who got off the ships is around 252,000 people so how can mm. they say that there are what 40 to 80 million quote unquote african americans how can 40 to 80 million African Americans come only from African people? And then of those people who got off the ship, the majority of them were little boys and teenage boys. There's probably mm. only out those numbers, like around 33 to 35,000 females. And most of those were pre, you know, like preteen girls. They wanted to get the children so they can condition them and take them out of their their tribal history so they can become yeah. slaves for life basically yeah. they can mold you if you got children mm -hmm. you can tell them anything so you can tell you them anything at, yes so looking back at um the book i told you about the true history of pocahontas the chief who wrote the book our chief um Custolo, he mentioned how they would kidnap our children in the like the older women so that they can condition them. You can control a, a woman more than a man. And the children, you can tell them anything. You can tell little children, powered in children, Indian children that they are from Africa. And they wouldn't know because they don't have their parents or anyone there with them. They split the people up, they mix them around. I mean, you can give them any type of story that you want to if you're taking children. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's how they do it. They get us young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and that's with with a lot of things. Yeah, that's with a lot of things. Yeah. So, um, one thing I wanted to ask you. Um, so at this point, uh, the question came up. Well, the statement came up mm -hmm. on a post that science 
has proved that all life started in Africa. Okay. Um, I think Lu Lucia was mentioned. Yeah. Um, Lucy, right. You know, so this is where the Pan-Africans throw this out there. All life, all human life started in Africa. The, you know, the original man comes from Africa. Okay. Well, I'll say this. What does the actual indigenous African say? Because not one indigenous African tribe says that all people came from Africa. No indigenous tribes anywhere says that their ancestors came from Africa. So where are you going to believe these people who are guessing? These A lot of these out of Africa is a theory. They're guessing. They had an out of Asia theory before that. They had an out of Australia theory. theory. And now I remember, what was it last year that they try to say that people might have originated in Europe and it kind of pissed a lot of Pan-Africans off. So are you going to believe people with theories or actual Talk to the actual right. indigenous African people. It's like they want a, a certain narrative, but then they don't, you know, they want to be um, from Africa, but you don't want to talk to the actual traditional African people. Maybe some of these westernized African people would agree with it, but the traditional people don't. They don't believe everybody's yeah. from them. And, but, but, you know, all of the indigenous Melanie people across the world we were all the indigenous people of the planet before the Europeans put these borders together and separated us. It wasn't like we hate you over here or there. People had their rivals, but it wasn't like they hated someone because they were across the water or whatever. Right. So where does the where does the where does the whole all life comes from Africa? Where, they're going really off with comes. Lucy, the finding of Lucy, which was not even a modern human being. She's like an ape person. And they're trying to say that we uh, evolved from that person. Um, and the theory, you know, the stuff comes from Charles Darwin and his theories, but people don't know Charles Darwin was a eugenics. You know, if you look up eugenics, it was a very racist group of people who even discriminated against Eastern Europeans, other pale people like them, saying that people were inferior to Basically, the whole planet was inferior to people from Western Europe, and um, that's based. That's his base. He used eugenics as the basis of the out of Africa theory and of the um, theory of evolution. So you have to really research the people and research their research and see where it's coming from. Right. Yeah, because uh, I'm going to. Um... I'm sure they're going to be in the comments asking questions about that, but that was something that was brought up. Um, mm -hmm. um, I see someone one in of there. the topics. <laughs> you see, you see someone in there defending it, but of course, of course. Um, but that's I listen. That's what this uh, conversation is here for. But you know um, what? Even if you believe in the Af out of Africa theory, then that would definitely give you more proof that the people who were here when the Europeans came here were so-called black people. So how, you know, the Pan-Africans want to say that everyone everywhere else, even including Asia and Europe, were so-called black people, you know, the indigenous people, except America, except the Americas, which makes absolutely no sense. If it was, if you really, if you even believe in this out of Africa theory, look how, look how close we are to Africa. They could have got on a boat and got here before they got to uh, Australia. So how come the, you, you claim an indigenous Australia came from Africa, but not the Americans. They're, they weren't black, quote unquote, black people. It's not making any sense with these. They, the people are picking since, and choosing, and they're not using logic. Now, since since you bring that to the table, right? Mm -hmm. We always hear another thing we hear about is the skin color, mm -hmm. the pigmentation. Um, we're we're from the sun. We're from the you know and uh, you know all of that, right? Yeah. How do you address that um, when that comes? So uh, those are other theories. They try to use the climate theory that it's not climate high. theory. Yeah, but the, the the climate in Georgia is the same as in West Africa. So how come the, how can indigenous people of Georgia not look like those people? You know how can the indigenous people of Brazil not look like the people right across from them? 
even if you're hmm. going by, I mean, you can even going by their theories, it's not making any sense. And they don't know I've that been... certain climates, like Canada was tropical at one point. Canada and like, hmm. um, you know, the, the um, New England area, all the stuff was tropical at one point when we had human life on it. So people- Tasha, you just, you just making this up, Tasha. No. You just making this up, Tasha. Canada wasn't Canada. Yes, Canada true. wasn't tropical. Yeah, they, you they just have, making this up. There's actually <laughs> a book about Luthia, or it's spelled Louisa, who is actually one of the oldest. They found another one older than her, but one of the oldest bones found in America. She was found in Brazil. Um, in in this book. They go into her and say, basically, she looked like a so-called black woman. So if the hmm. if one of the most ancient bones found here looked like us, then what is that meaning? And also in that book, they were talking about um, they found this. Um, it was like it wasn't like a skeleton; it was some type of fossilized remains in Canada, and it, in within those remains, it had some type of um, the pieces of sickle cell, uh, I don't know what you call the membranes. I'm not a very science person, but they had traces yeah. of sickle cell um, on that on that remain. And they said that proved that this thing had to come from a tropical environment. And this was found in Canada. So that's more proof that of hmm. our oral tradition saying the, uh, that Canada was tropical. So the book is called Bones. Uh -huh. I can't remember what the name, but if you look up Luthia, and bones the book it should come back come i mean and i was being funny when i was saying you're making this up because that's what will be said you're just making this up when mm -hmm. i'm saying there's this information out here for people to actually go look into and they won't they'll just say you're making this up but won't go look into it and say whoa right you're telling the truth right. like, yeah you feel what I'm he just said in the Library of Congress, he saw a book that said that um, there's rattlesnakes in Virginia. And that's for that that they had elements of a tropical environment in Virginia. Now, we know today Virginia has all four seasons. Um, but in the past, like, it's slowly, the, the this continent slowly getting colder and colder. So when they came here, hmm. it, was, it was hotter than it is now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's something I want to touch on, but I'm going to come back to that because I think this is what everybody's waiting on. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to touch on a couple terms, right? I'm going to I'm 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 going to bring up a couple terms, right? That um I'm going to ask you maybe if you can explain what they mean or what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, first term, um, grandma killer. Mm, yeah, that's the term that my cousin explain. Phoenix Moon came up with. She's basically saying that people would take the word of a foreigner or a European over the word of their grandma. So you're basically killing your grandma off and her legacy because you're going, you're going on with somebody else's saying. So that's what she, I believe that's what she means about grandma killers. Okay, okay. Now, when we hear the term Turtle Island, can you touch on, or can you explain mm -hmm. Turtle Island? Um, okay. Why it's used or where it comes from? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've heard some people speaking on Turtle Island. Um, you know. Well, Turtle Island was a term that people used for the Americas at one time. Um, they claimed that the Americas look like a turtle. But as my, my cousin Cheetah Pa says, uh, Turtle Island was all the continents together and Pangea. So there was Turtle Island East and there was a Turtle Island West when they split away. Um, it doesn't mean physically split because I don't really believe there was a physical split. Now, every indigenous culture, even the Bible, even all these other um, documents talk about a flood. So from our oral history, it tells us that there was a flood over the land, which separated the people. So the land is mm. still connected under, I know a lot of Pan-Africans tell this tale of 
Africa being the only rooted continent, but that's not possible because Africa is connected to Europe and Asia. So how can Africa be, so the rest of Europe and Asia is flowed in Africa is not? No, all of the, all of the continents are rooted. That's why we have tectonic plates. That's why we have earthquakes. It's all rooted, but there's sea levels. We all know what a sea level is, right? There's areas mm -hmm. that are way below sea level. Now there's also, if you look it up, um, there's a picture of these deep sea divers and um, they're under, they're in the water and they're touching a piece of land from Europe and from America. So mm. that's showing you now that the, the land is connected under the water, right? So the great mm. flood stories that all these different people had shows the separation of these different continents. Wow. That's yeah. I never seen that. I ain't. Yeah. I didn't even know that. It's a picture. You guys can wow. look it up. It's a picture. I wish I was able to um, bring it up, but there's a picture of the divers. They're touching the different, and then also they found quote unquote a piece of Africa off the coast of Georgia. So hmm. wow. These are just these land plates sliding under the water. All of this is connected. We're on the same planet. People are trying to make so much division, but we're on the same piece of land, same, same planet. planet. Same I agree. I agree. All right. So let's go into this. What, the question. <laughs> I see a lot of people asking questions. It's going by so far. You said ley lines, Ralph. It's going by so fast. I can't. Um... You see something you want to? You see something you want to address in there? Because I'm not. I, I wasn't looking in the comments. You, is no, there something you want to address in the comments? It's going by so fast. I know you have your other phone, so you probably can see it better. Uh, do y'all have any serious questions? Genealogy, you have genealogy questions as well. That's where I was going. Yeah, that's exactly where we was going now. So my my next question was, can you explain the difference between DNA and genealogy? Okay. What's what's the difference in what you're doing with them? Well, if you actually go to these genealogy, I mean, these, well, the genealogy sites do have DNA testing, like Ancestry. If you go to the DNA pages of these sites, they will actually tell you in the details that it's for entertainment purposes only. They can't really, for certain, find the regions of your ancestors. Now, they can connect you with cousins and find your long-lost father or your uncles or whatever, but they cannot for certain find out the region because they know that they're not using the ancient DNA on these tests and they are not um, accounting for migrations of the people. So they're using current people, like if you, the European ancestry comes up in the test, they're using current people who live in Europe. Now who lives in Europe now? All types of races of people live in Europe, Right. you know, in different places. Right. And then even, when Europeans do these tests, they get all these crazy results that doesn't make sense. They might have um, they might have genealogy and oral history saying that their whole family is Italian. Then they do a DNA test and it tells them that they're North African or they're right. Irish and stuff that they didn't even hear of and is not on their genealogy. So right. I had a, a, a friend who actually worked for the... Um, the National Institute of Health, and she uh, got her master's in genetics. And she had told me before when I asked her about doing a DNA test, she was saying that it's not really up to par of finding regions, and they do not use, like I said, the, the ancient DNA. Um, like if you're doing a paternity test, like you see on Maury Povich, yeah, that's fine because that's only going back one generation. If you're trying to find out where okay. you're going, gotcha. It's, it's nearly impossible, especially with those cheap kits. You would have to go and spend thousands of dollars in a lab to get any results that are decent. So Somebody brought up that point. Somebody mm -hmm. did bring up that point. They said, um, well, we believe in uh, DNA when, you know, we're trying to find out who the father is or when we're trying to get somebody out of jail or whatever. Yeah. So that was a good point you just mentioned. 
Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? But we're not going generations mm -hmm. back. You feel what I'm saying? So that was a great point I think you just made because right. that comes up a lot. Uh, okay. We're not, we're, you know, we, uh, we follow, you know, we, we use the DNA when we want to find little certain things close, you know, close yeah. in time. Yeah, close family you know members. So, um, it's not going to find the location or region. It's not. I thought that was a, um, I thought also, that was a good point. Uh, just Dr. Fatou Dara, she has, um, worked with a few people with doing the DNA and she had said that she's half uh guy guy what's it Ghanaian? I'm about to say Guyanese. She's half Ghanaian, so her father is from West Africa. So she was saying that her test, there was something in the test that showed that marker, but with somebody else that was African American, quote unquote, it did not show that those were known markers like it was i forget what she said the tests were lit up i think it's 23 and me she used and going yeah. by the raw yeah. dna it did not show it said unknown now a lot of quote-unquote african-americans get large portions of their tests come back saying unknown dna so how do you explain that how do you how do they not know people are paying their money for this and yeah, there's a lot of yeah. question marks. Um, I watched, I watched, uh, I watched Sinetta last night, and mm -hmm. some guy, I, I, I don't remember the guy, right? Um, so I watched them go through Sinetta's. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched them go through Sinetta's DNA, right? Mm -hmm. And what threw me off, right, was I'm watching them go through this DNA, and I'm seeing them say, probably, probably, probably probably more than anything as they're going through this DNA. It's guesses. They're guessing. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm sitting here like, well, gosh, everything you say, oh, you're probably related to Ramesses. The, the, you get what I'm saying? And, and right. you probably have a bloodline of such and such, um, which means you probably are uh, in this you know what I'm saying? Like, or from this region and probably uh, more than likely, you get what I'm saying? I watch mm -hmm. this and I'm hearing probably more than likely this guy is trying to break down Sinetta's, um DNA and I'm sitting here like, well, gosh, everything is probably more than likely. Like, that's almost like a, a Christian saying believe. Yeah. That's, you get what I'm saying? Exactly I'm using the word is. believe. That's exactly what it is. But even these people who work there will tell you that it's not for certain. There, there's a couple. Of it's not for certain either way. Possibly, yeah. probably, it's not for certain. Either word you use. Now there was this woman, more than likely. That's not for certain. There's there this one woman who did, um, a melanated woman. She did two DNA tests. I think one from Ancestry, one from Twenty Three and Me. Her ancestor results said she was sixty-seven or something percent, like a high percent European. And then the other one said something totally different. Now, she wrote in asking, like, what's up with these results? And they were like, these results are right. These are the right results. And they were, like, in total denial that they were wrong. So it's like, how can you do two tests and come up with totally different results? Also, did you see when they did, did you see when they used the dog? Yeah, that's what I was about to bring up the dog DNA. So how yeah. can a dog be a full blood, uh, was it First Nations Canadian? It, it doesn't make sense. Like, it, yeah. Who are they? Using they were doing for this with DNA, tests? like, yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, you guys, I'm getting ready to um, right, Pete, I'm getting ready to run a couple things by Tasha real quick. Um, just a couple um comments that some people have said. Um, and then I mean the questions. You guys can start with the questions. Mm -hmm. Um, let me run this by Tasha real quick. I'm gonna come out the chat so I can see the questions. Um, yeah. this was a comment made by by my brother LB. Mm -hmm. LB says. Even if even family trees get distorted, I have a half brother who mom changed his last name to our last name because her baby that because her baby daddy fell out. Her and her baby daddy fell out. When I was a kid, I thought it was cool until I got older and had children and gave them my last his last name. My brother doesn't have one drop of blue fur blood in him, yet his children have our last name. Then his son will grow up and he'll get married and have a wife with the last name Blueford and more children with the last name Blueford. Family trees can get distorted over time. 
the mm. most accurate way for DNA. If a kid pops up saying he's my son or daughter, how can that be proven? DNA. You say you are Blueford. What he's saying about about the DNA as far as finding out if this is my child. You just explained yeah, that. If you're doing yeah, if you're doing genealogy, his birth certificate is gonna say something different. It doesn't matter what he changed his last name. Many families changed their last whole families changed their last name or spelled it differently. That with that woman changing the name, that's a rare case. That doesn't happen. Also we already talked about the DNA. You can do a DNA test. If he did a right. DNA test he would link up with people with his real surname because you can find family members with DNA, but DNA, they don't use ancient DNA. So you can't really find the ancient, your ancient ancestors with it. Um, mm. But yeah, so, that, that's not a um, common case. So genealogy, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, uh, I know we talked about the DNA, can you tell them, uh, I, I saw somebody in the comment asking the question, how do we do genealogy? Um, genealogy. They just asked that in the uh, comments well, not too long ago. You can use many of those sites that we just talked, the Ancestry, you can use that. Um, FamilySearch.com. And genealogy is basically um, the trick from, def I'm leaving a definition now. It's the trace tracing of a bloodline of ancestors or family members that you descended from or are related to. So you're basically starting from yourself and working your way back to all your ancestors and your ancestors double like you have two, you know, you have two parents, you have four grandparents, you know, they double every generation that you go back. Um, so how you would start is the simplest way many people start is going on ancestry.com and creating a family tree. It's pretty easy. They'll ask you your personal information, ask you who your parents are and who your grandparents are. And then you'll have little tablets, what are they called, leaflets pop up and then you'll find more and more information. Yeah. Um, you can also do it by hand if you print out um, a pedigree chart. And I know it sounds like dogs, but that's not, <laughs> pedigree means like the different, you know, which you descend from. That's how they use for dogs. Right, right. Um, it's, right. it's basically brackets. Y'all know how to do the final four brackets. It, it's basically brackets like that. Right, yeah. You write your name, you yep. write your parents on the bracket, you write their parents on the bracket and go back as far as you can. Then that's when you can go and research. Um, you can, there's a lot of digital files now. You can actually go to the courthouse where those people are from and pull up land records, different records that will give you clues on who they're related to. All the census records from um, 17, well, a good percent of them from 1790 until probably 1950 um, is available online. And the sister, um, Kristen Ballou asked a question. She said, so who is the most accurate company to go to? For DNA results? Uh, for DNA, Kristen, or for genealogy? Now, for genealogy, you can sure. use anyone. Um, fam Answer student charges, I think, 19 a month, or you can get the bulk plan. Family search is free. Um, many libraries also have the, the library edition of Ancestry.com for free, but you will have to email yourself the results, uh, you know, the documents that you find on there. So, uh, so what do you... Um... How, um, what, what all do you, uh, she said for both? For both? Um, I would start with, um, Ancestry for Genealogy and 23andMe for DNA. Now, with the DNA, you can use the raw results and go on a website called GEDmatch. I've had a, a few cousins, uh, find each other on GEDmatch. GEDmatch will match your raw DNA with actual family members who are in the database. And they have their email or you know contact information. You can email them and get their phone numbers. And a lot of people find more information about their family that way. Some people find out that they aren't just like the young man. They aren't descended from the people that they thought were their family. Maybe they have a different father, or they find out that these people are their aunt and not their, you know, their real mother and father, their aunt and uncle. Um, so you can actually find people with the DNA like close relatives. 
regional is not uh, is not accurate. You're not going to find a regional ancestors with a fifty nine dollar uh, DNA kit. That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not. It's not even. They don't even have the ancient DNA in the database. So even if you're paying more with the twenty three and Me, which I believe is one ninety nine. They're using the same type of database as the fi the fifty nine dollar one, so um, yeah. if you want to save money, get the fifty nine dollar kit, and then upload the raw results to jedmatch dot com to find actual cousins that can help you. Gotcha. So and and, and um, you said uh, family search for genealogy. Fam family, family search dot org is free. It's um. The Mormons provide that service. I think they also have something to do with Ancestry.com. But Ancestry.com has more information, especially the library edition. So to save your money, you can if your library has that service, I will go to the library. Make the make the Ancestry.com with the 14-day free trial just right. to make your tree. And even if you're not paying monthly, you can still log on, even if you're not paying, after the trial goes off. And you can still use that the the documents that you find in the library and email it to yourself and add those to your tree. Yeah, I liked um I liked I definitely liked um family search. Mm -hmm. Um we went on family search, man. We went back in our family. Mm -hmm. Like we went, I mean, we went like four directions. This this person had kids and that person had kids and we went to the and we went everywhere in that family. Like right. <laughs> on both sides of the family. You feel what I'm saying? I, I really like that. It showed us um it showed us their um their classifications. Mm -hmm. That like I was saying, like I was telling the brother um how our fourth I think our fourth grandmother had a passport. It mm -hmm. showed us all of that. You feel what I'm saying? The brother saying that they didn't have passports back then. Yes, they did. Right. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes, they did, bro. The only thing about those sites that I say is you can't 100% trust the trees that people already made. You're going to have to mm -hmm. go through and prove them right. I've had a couple yeah. instances that I had tried to add stuff from other people's tree that was wrong. Um, and then some of the times people are lazy and they don't go back as far as they can. There's other information, and other ancestors that you could find. So... Especially, you know, uh, on Family Search, and I think it's another, I forget what the other name, Jenny, I think it's called G E N E, what, G E N I dot com. Jenny dot com has a lot of fake trees, and there's a lot of people who are claiming to be like related to Pocahontas, for example, and other people yeah. who are really just European people trying to connect to these families. Because I guess they think they're going to get some benefits or whatever from it. Um, all those trees are not correct. So you're going to have to go and find the actual evidence of these people. Now, Pocahontas has, and maybe other people, I know for sure for Pocahontas, she has actually genealogy books, which a lot of people don't realize that there's actually family books by your surnames that you can look up and find your family mm. tree on to connect. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and then some of them are out of print and they're hard to find, but then there's others that are in the library. And you can go. Find yeah, that's, that. I mean, I really like that, man. Um, and, and like my cousin was saying, he made that tree himself uh, mm -hmm. from our family. You know what I'm saying? We got all the names. Um, I even had uh, uh, some people from my, uh, some, some, some of my older cousins, they got our names and stuff together as far <laughs> back as we could go. My cousin got in on it, man. Everybody was going in on the family, but it it was very intriguing to see, man, like we went through the family and you're looking at pictures of people who look just like you, different uh, um, pigmentation. You feel what I'm saying? It, it was, I, I'm talking about I'm talking about our, our, our grandmother down the line, mm -hmm. light skin, mm -hmm. but our grandmother, our actual grandmother was dark skin, mm -hmm. like, which they look just alike. I mean, we're looking at everything from, like, wow. Then we're just looking at how the families branched off, like, you know, right. and how they ended up in Virginia and how they ended up in Ohio mm -hmm. and how they ended up, you feel what I'm saying? It was telling us all of this. Yeah, and that's what so I was much. saying. We didn't have a slave in our family. Exactly. And that's why you got to learn the, when you're doing the genealogy, you got to learn the background history as well so you can understand 
why people are doing certain jobs. Like if you have ancestors from uh, North Carolina, some of them moved from North Carolina to Georgia because of the turpentine factories and different things. And a lot of those people are American Indians that worked in the turpentine factories. It's different, yeah. you know, you got to have, that's, you know, sometimes you might need the help of someone who has the genealogy background because they know the history as well. If you're doing genealogy, you have to know a little bit of history, at least, at the very least, um, to make, to put the pieces together. And also I wanted to say that you can't just be adding people to the tree when you don't have proof. It's like your cousin said, you All have right. the census records and you have passports. There's a lot of people who are just adding names because they see it on the other tree. It's right. best. I mean, you can add them now for reference, but it's best to go back and find the, find you know find people on the census that they're connected to as family members. Right. Yeah, we're. Uh, I'm reading my cousin's comments in in the in the post, and he's 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 telling like you know how Steve Harvey is our direct um, bloodline. He's mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like. Um, my grandmother and his father, you know, all of it, it's, that's our direct bloodline. So it wasn't hard for us to find out a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you feel what I'm saying? Uh, he was saying, uh, Steve Harvey proof how Steve Harvey is our dad's, um, Steve Harvey's dad is our great grandmother's brother. You feel what I'm saying? Like we found out like all of this stuff is in our going through our family tree. We found all, all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And we're watching everything branch by branch branch by branch so tasha that's what i'm kind of telling everybody like you know what i'm saying we know everything about egypt mm -hmm. we know everything about the pharaohs we know everything about you know what i'm saying everything else over there but then when i ask you about your family you can't tell me nothing about your own family they should be able to that's find who's african on the census or on these records they should be able to find the the ship records or passports that they were recent you know more recent. but they're not going to go look for that tasha that's what i'm saying that's right. this is the point i'm making about some of us claim we want truth mm -hmm. but we don't really want truth right right and that's why i made the post on my page how would you actually feel if you found out you are not african mm -hmm. what would that do to you you get what i'm saying yeah. this is I'm not bashing anybody. This is all I'm trying to do is get people to think. Ask yourself questions. You get what I'm saying? Like, right, right, right. I'm going to shut him up. Let me shut him up. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Tasha, I wanted to ask you this before we get out of here, right? Right. You just brought this up, and I um, and I wanted to see if you could touch on this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. The census. Mm -hmm. The census um, that's coming back around. Can you tell us why it's important that we need to find out who we are? I mean, there's a lot of things for the census that they talk about. Um, there's a lot of things that they're not talking about. Some people do believe that if you're claiming to be from somewhere else, that they're going to be deporting you. You already see uh, the cur current president trying to deport a lot of people. Um, also, it has to do with tribals. Um, funding as well. If you're claiming a certain tribe, um, it, it has to do, it, it's a lot of things that is in, important with the census. Um, dealing with roads, different things. And you want to be documented right because just like you want to be documented right. If you, just like you're going back and doing your genealogy on your family, somebody's going to go back and do their genealogy on you. You're going to be ancestor one day. So it's, it's better right. to get it right because they've gotten a lot wrong. Um, we know a lot of our ancestors who were American Indian, documented as Negro, mulatto, sometimes white on the census. Um, they weren't allowed the, the benefit of being put down correctly, right? Mm. So you have mm. that option now to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and that's what I'm saying. We gotta get it right. It's up, somebody was asking me, um, what what i mean what does it matter what you know you know that type of thing and my thing is this i'm going to teach my children who they are yeah it matters a lot your heritage it gives people a sense of pride yes. as well i mean the pan africans are proud to be african that's fine but find out who would try africa is just not like a blanket place find out the right. tribe find out the language they spoke so you can go do that too the people here right. we have land and things that are 
our ancestors, some people still have unclaimed land, unclaimed um, bank accounts from the Freeman Bureau or other places that are out here and people don't even know because they don't know who their ancestors are. You know? Yeah. So the brother, um, real quick, the brother Jay Carl says, your genealogy is the tracking of names. Mm -hmm. But when the names stop and the new names begin, how do you make the connection? Um, usually the people will have the same first name on the census. Um, I had a client, his he gave me um, the census for people who had the last name uh, Lockley on it. Um, I found a connection with the same, all every the whole family with the same first names on it in a different state with the last name Locklear on it. It sounds similar, it's spelled different. It's the same name. Um, just like you have like Maggie and Margaret. Those are the same, that's the same person. That's the same name. So that's how you make the connection by tracing all of all of the family members, not just one. Usually everybody's gonna move together. It's gonna be similar names. Similar names, so okay. they have the birth dates on there. They'll they might say from North Carolina or wherever that they're they're from. You said yeah. so there's no paper um, genocide. Yeah, there were there was paper genocide, but that wasn't their choice. Paper genocide was done by uh, vital statistics and a lot of the state records. No, paper genocide would not yeah, yeah. erase the name connection. Paper genocide will erase the race connection. They changed many okay. people's races. Even people born on reservations were changed to mulatto. Now, I have an ancestor who was born on the Mattapanai reservation and all her information says mulatto on it, but she was not uh, mm. biracial. She was not mixed. I think we, I think, uh, I think we saw, I think we saw that on our, in ours too. Mm -hmm. They use homes and territories. I think we saw that on ours too. Um, the sister Amanda, she asked a question. She said, if you don't or can't seem to have or find proof before 2020, what do you do then? Um, it's not, I don't believe it's life or death. Just keep doing the best that you can to find this information. Um, now that we're in the digital age, it's a little different. You don't have to go to courthouse to courthouse or to state archives to state archives. You can literally get on the internet and find out a lot of this information. Like I said, Ancestry.com is probably the easiest site. And just like you were saying, FamilySearch.org org is an easy site as well. There's other sites that have information. You can go on the National Archive website. There's actually a good website for quote unquote African American and indigenous people called freeafricanamericans.com. Now all the people on that site are not quote unquote African Americans. He distinguished some of them as being uh, Indian families. Many of them are Indian mm -hmm. families that are not uh, distinguished showing it, but all of these families were free people of color. And many people are finding their ancestors, including myself on that website. Now it's really a, a volumes. I think it's three volume book that costs like a hundred dollars each, but he was generous enough to put the information on the internet for free. And he's constantly updating the information. They have free Negro registers from, um, you know, from when they first came out and those give you a lot of clues and you'll see that these people are landowners. Some, some of these people own slaves themselves. These people weren't right. enslaved people. They have court cases, people representing themselves as court. Some of the people were formerly enslaved and they were intelligent enough to represent themselves in court. Now you can't, you know, roots and all the stuff, I like people were illiterate and stupid and yeah. these people were intelligent. They were confident enough to go in a courtroom as a enslaved person and represent themselves in court and actually win cases. You know, everyone, mm. if you actually read these documents, you see that this nonsense that everyone was so oppressed. And I'm not saying people weren't. I'm saying that how can a slave go in court? How can they take time off of their work? <laughs> a lot of y'all can't even take off of work nowadays. How can an enslaved person take off of work and put together a court case, represent themselves in court, and win the case? <laughs> If everybody was so, you know, racist and redneck, 
how can a, a quote unquote European person say, okay, this person's a slave, but they're right. I'm going to grant them the win. You know what I'm saying? So you got to know like right. Bruce and all that stuff was totally false. I'm not saying yeah. that the person was. But a lot of us, but a lot of us didn't know that. A lot of us, we didn't know that. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't know uh, Ruth was uh, false. Uh, and I didn't know that until my adulthood. Actually, that that I, his book was not even real. It was based on a European man book called The African. Right. It's a fictional novel. Right. It's based on a fictional novel called The African. If you go look for Roots right. now, I used to work at a bookstore. Roots is in the fiction section of the bookstore. It's not real. The junior <laughs> genealogists yeah. actually came together and did his genealogy, and they proved that everyone in his story didn't exist except his Cherokee grandmother. So if everybody's wow. African, how come Alex Haley, who told y'all y'all African, the only real person in his stories was his Cherokee grandmother? Wow. <laughs> so it's not, it's That's not crazy. making sense. She's the only one that So I see a conversation. On. There's a conversation going on in the chat. Um, it's stemming from J. Carl's uh, question where he says, what happened to your family's Indian names then? Well, like I said, um, dealing with Christianity, a lot of people got Christian names. Some people got names um, from when they traded. So if you have to go to court or you have to do any type of business, you needed a first and a surname. So you had some people, they might have been friends with a European person and took on that surname or they had, they created a name that was similar to their tribal clan name or whatever. Okay. Like a lot of indigenous people created the name Brown. I'm from one of the Brown families. Those, mm. you know, a lot of them from bear clan or whatever, like a, a brown bear or whatever. That's how a lot of people got their names or like maybe they're friends with John Smith and they're like, oh, he has a cool name. So next time they go to court, they're going to say their name is Adam Smith or whatever. People had, yeah. and the American in Indians are known to have several names as well. Um, if you look up the chief of the Nottawe, her name was like Braina Rue in her language, but she went by Eva Turner. And she was actually the one who protected that turn in his family, which the name connection is kind of, you know, you got to look into that a little more. Like, why do they have the same surname? But that that's just how people did business. Yeah. They used that European name for business and, you know, as their Christian name. I see. Mm. Okay, so listen, um, I ain't going to hold you up all day, man. Like, I, uh -huh. I, you know, I think this is a dope little... Um, a, a dope conversation. Let me just ask them in the comments right quick. Does anybody have any other genealogy questions um, for Tasha before we get off? Um, right. Your cousin said they I had names wanna... like Carpenter with the with doing with the profession. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, because Jay is asking, so at some point your Indian right. names ended and your Christian names began, correct? Right. So my, he's answering off of those. You said can Indians so. basically committed paper genocide on yourself. Um, what they did was assimilate. It was a, for protection. They had to assimilate. You had to assimilate or you were the enemy, correct? So the people who didn't assimilate became slaves. They were captured in these wars or they just basically kidnapped, as you see in 12 Years a Slave. The man was just kidnapped and became a slave, which they were doing until the 1800s. Um, you either assimilated or you became a slave and then you were forced to assimilate. So it was basically get down or lay down. Basically, you use the street terms. He said, they so his question is, if, if uh, his question, what he's saying is, if everyone changed their names, how can, your, how can you use genealogy to track your family? Many of these people gained their Christian names or their, their business names in the late what, 1600s, early 1700s. And uh, the genealogy, the, the census records, and a lot of the records didn't start until 1790. So there's a long time period to be documented. Um, and slave people as well had to take those. Some of them didn't have surnames. Some of them had their own surname. And that's, you know, another myth that we get from Pan-Africans that this is my slave name. I got to change. No, these families, they might have been enslaved by the 
by the uh, Winston family, but their their last name was Smith, so it could be like Peter Smith was worked on. You know, he lived on the Winston plantation, but he had his own name. He had his own identity. So, uh, many slaves did sure. have surnames. Um, someone's asking: uh, Are there any pointers? Are there any pointers on how to prove documents? Are are your ancestors? Mm -hmm. You know suggested records. Hold on. Any pointers on how to prove documents are your ancestors? You know the suggested records. Do you understand the question? No, I don't understand. I'm not sure. Any pointers on how to prove documents are you? Oh, like I said, with the census records, you will be able to line up the family members. They have to have the same family members. They have to be around the same age range. Now, all of them are not perfect. They can get birth dates or estimate. Most of them have estimated birth dates because the people, the census workers are looking at people and they're making guess. So they might look at a person and guess their race, they guess their age, or they can ask them this question. Sometimes people don't know. So they would have to just put whatever on the page. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Um, yeah. Um, and, and Demetrius is asking, is there any way that you can trace your roots without the government finding out? I don't know. understand. <laughs> Most of this is government vital records that you're looking at. Um, the, like I said, there's there's genealogy books with family records with your family genealogy in it for some certain families. Um, I don't think the go government's sitting around looking at who's researching. <laughs> who's Unless you're going to like the National Archives, you have to get it. If you go to National Archives or um, the Library of Congress, you do have to get an ID made, but they're just doing that because they don't want people to steal books. They want to know who's in the library. Okay, so I want to ask you about that too. Mm -hmm. The National Archives, um, are they the same everywhere? Um, um, no. I have a National Archives right here. Right. And I wanted to take, I wanted to take some people with me mm -hmm. to the National Archives. Um, uh, will, we, will we find the same information in any National Archives we go to or? No, some of them have replicas of the, you know, copies of the information. I believe the one in D.C. and Maryland that have most of the official documents. I would call them beforehand and ask them that question. But they do have a lot of information and they do have access to help you with, you know, doing some genealogy stuff. Um, a lot of these archives okay. have a staff genealogist. They might not be, you know, somebody that's volunteering, usually an elderly person that's volunteering to help people. So they might not be the most savvy, uh, especially dealing with our type of genealogy, but they'll, you know, be there okay. to give you kind of a little bit of tips and things. Um, when I, nah, was here, I know, yeah, um, they really didn't help me much when I went to the one in DC. Cause I, I mean, I already know pretty much a lot of stuff, but I was playing dumb and they, they really didn't, they really, I, you know, they really didn't know that much. So. Yeah, I um, I found out we have one right here. Like, I'm one exit away from a National Archives in Morrow, mm -hmm. Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. Um, yeah. So um, I didn't know. I just wanted to, like, get some people because I knew there were people here who have questions mm -hmm. and who have been watching, you know, what we've been posting and talking about. And there's been questions. Um, and I was thinking, like, hey, man, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, we take a weekend and we go mm -hmm. to the National Archives and we look yeah. things up, We you know. We just all get together and make this trip together. So um, also, I remember my cousin was doing a lot of, um, he was getting a lot of information from uh, National Archives outside of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a lot and, of um, They do, and the, that archive probably does have access to the, the free library version of Ancestry.com too. So you probably, I mean, you're going to get something out of going there. It's not going to be like a total yeah. waste of time. And like I said, they probably have a staff genealogist, genealogist there to help. They, they're only going to do so okay. much. They're just going to kind of assist. They're not going to do the genealogy for you. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, listen, man, I, I enjoyed you. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you for coming on. I'm not going to hold you up, hold your day up. Mm -hmm. But um, if, if we, you know, if I think if people found this to be a, 
uh, informative live, man. Maybe you know more so on my side. Yeah. Um, maybe we should do it again. Um, if you know it's something they were interested in. Right. Um, I know a lot of people come behind the scenes mm-hmm. and they add. Um, asking questions and things like that because mm-hmm. then people start looking at them funny and things like that. Um, I've already heard the comments about I ain't gonna I don't know if it was about me or not, but oh, no. about people flip flopping mm-hmm. type thing. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if that was about me or not, but I'm not gonna worry about it. But um, yeah. you know. I think um, if, if this was very informative to people, I didn't want to come on here and have a debate with people. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to be able to come on and just put some information out here because a lot of us, mm-hmm. we just follow what people are telling us. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. you'll still have people who will leave this live right here and say, she don't know what she's talking about. She just making stuff up. Instead of Verify. going to find the information that she's okay. telling you about. I'm telling y'all you'll, you you'll rather say mm-hmm. she don't know what she's talking about or insult, you know, send insults instead of refuting the information, right. you know, and seeing what she's talking about. So, um, you know, hey, listen, I, I appreciate you, Tasha, man. Thank you so yeah, much. You guys, um, I, I mean, I ask questions. I mean, I ask people to ask me questions all the time on my YouTube channel as well as the same as my name on here. Y'all can find me on here too if y'all have any questions on, on YouTube. Yes, uh, definitely subscribe to Tasha's YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm telling y'all, I went on her YouTube channel and I got stuck. Mm-hmm. I got stuck and I, I loved it. I didn't even know she had a YouTube channel. Tasha's been on my page for a minute. And, um, you know, a lot of this is me just really starting to speak out on this mm-hmm. um, um, because I was dealing a lot with religion at, right. at the time. You feel what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I just feel like, um, you know, I'm moving in another direction. And some of us really need to start just listen, whether you're African or not. Listen, at least find out. Yes. Don't just follow what somebody's telling you. Mm-hmm. At least go find out. Right. We took the time to go find out. We went through our family to go find out. Hey, I have, listen, I love people. I love people. You feel what I'm saying? But at the same time, you can't keep telling me who I am and right. who I'm not. You feel what I'm saying? So that's that's basically our issue, man. You know, um, but, I, you know, Tasha, I thank you, man. And, um, hey, maybe we can do this again. Yeah, if, if, yeah sure. If they ask for it. All right. You know, okay. trust me, they'll let me know. They'll come in, the, they'll come in my inbox mm-hmm. and let me know. So, yeah. um, you guys, I want to. I, you want to say anything before before we get off, Tasha? Uh, no, I think I covered everything pretty much. I'm just saying, you know, you guys got to do your own individual genealogy to know who you are. You can't be going by these blanket terms. I mean, like you said before, it's the same thing with, you know, we went through with religion and other things in the past. And just going on belief, you got to know. This is the age of knowing right now. So you got to know, yeah, you got to research everything. Everything I'm saying, I want y'all to go back and research it. Look up the books that I mentioned. Look at the websites I mentioned. You see all that information yeah. that I said on there. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to just believe. You're supposed to know and find out for yourself. That's that's right, Tasha. That's mm-hmm. right. I'm I'm all the way with you on that one. And I mean, this is the same thing we were saying about religion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all don't want to know. Y'all just want to believe. You feel what I'm saying? And and all I'm just asking you is, what do you know about your own family, man? Like, mm-hmm. you can tell me everything about everything else, but when I ask you about your family, you don't know. Listen, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. You feel what I'm saying? I didn't know about my own family. Remember, I said I was ignoring my own grandmother. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I heard her. I heard her. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I heard her. But in school, I'm being taught this every day. Every day, I have social studies class every day. And we you are what I'm saying? that they don't tell you that Roots was based on a fictional novel. He got sued. No, court, they don't. And he lost, and he had to pay the guy. And some of us, novel, right? many of us, had to watch Roots in school. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So, I mean, you know, so this is all we're saying, you guys, man. I love you guys, man. Um, Tasha, thank you so much thank again, you. man. Um, I'm, I'm gonna get out of here, God. man, and um, uh, we'll talk after we'll talk after this, Tasha. Okay. And um, you know, you know, all right. Talk to you later, Tasha. Peace, everybody. Peace.